In this video, we're going to get Apollo set up with Ableton Live. Before we get into it, please make sure that the Apollo software is installed. First, make sure that Apollo is powered on and connected to the computer. After Live is loaded, we're going to want to load the Apollo driver. We do this in the Preferences window, which is found under the Live menu. Next, select Audio from the tabs on the left. Core Audio should be selected under the Driver menu. Under Audio Input Device and Audio Output Device, select Universal Audio Apollo from the list. Next, click on the Input Config and Output Config buttons and make sure that all the mono and stereo pairs that we want to record with are highlighted. Otherwise, the channels won't show up in the Ableton Live Mixer. In addition to loading the driver, the Audio Preferences tab is also where we set the I.O. buffer size. It is common to set the I.O. buffer size low for recording and set it high when mixing, but if we use the console application, low buffers are less important because the console application handles low latency monitoring and recording duties. Low buffers typically put more strain on the computer's resources. We can change the I.O. buffer size here in Live by either clicking and dragging on the box or by clicking on the box once and then manually entering a value. To get the lowest latency of plugins running inside Ableton Live's mixer, we would set this lower, provided we have enough computer horsepower to do so. While setting a higher buffer does increase the internal latency in Live, automatic delay compensation will compensate for any delays in the Ableton Live mixer. Once the driver is loaded and all buffer settings are made, go ahead and close the Preferences window for the settings to take effect. Now that Apollo's driver is loaded, Live will automatically set the sample rate of Apollo whenever we open a session. If we want to set the clock source for Apollo, we will need to open the Console Settings panel. We can launch it quickly from the UA logo in the Finder. Click on Console Settings, and there we can set the clock source. Now we only need to do this if we want to set the clock source to something other than internal, like Word Clock, for example. Now if we go to the I.O. Assign on a track, we can see the inputs of Ableton showing up, so we can route any of the inputs for recording. The dedicated monitor outputs of Apollo are the dedicated 1-2 outputs of the interface, so most of the time, an Ableton Live session will automatically play out of those outputs. Of course, we can use the Ableton Live Mixer to address any of Apollo's other digital or analog outputs, including the headphone outputs. The inputs of Apollo can be easily routed to any track, just by selecting the inputs we want. While there's no way to see the names of the inputs, we can either find the names of the inputs in the Apollo documentation, or we can use the Audio MIDI setup window to show the inputs. Simply launch the app and select Universal Audio Apollo, and there we can see the names. We may want to resize the column to see the full name. To take advantage of Apollo's real-time U80 processing, the console application gives us a powerful tracking interface with front-end processing. We can launch the console from the application icon or from the UA icon found in the Finder. Click it and select Console. Routing for the console is very intuitive. It was designed to emulate the workflow of plugging a hardware console into an audio interface. But in this case, it's all inside of Apollo's hardware and DSP. We never have to get into any kind of router or matrix interface to get inputs routed. Inputs are always virtually hooked up to the track's input path assign, so we will always hear sound. Unless, of course, the console's fader is pulled down or muted. When record enabling tracks, it is common to hear the console application's low latency path and live software monitor path at the same time. To avoid hearing the signal twice, we want to turn off the software monitoring feature in Live. It's really easy to do. Audio tracks in Live have three monitor buttons. After we record enable this track, simply set the monitor state to off. This automatically defeats the software monitor path, so we can just use the console application instead. This ensures that latency is not an issue, and the hardware buffer setting no longer applies to monitoring latency because the console allows us to hear all of the inputs in real time. Another powerful application for Apollo is the console recall plugin. In addition to giving us access to Apollo's monitor features from within Live, it also gives us the ability to completely recall the settings of the console application. All we need to do is check the sync button, and now anytime we hit save in Live, the console recall plugin will store the settings of the console app with the Live session. This ensures that we can open a session months or years down the line and our tracking front end will be completely recalled. Of course, Apollo works just like existing U82 DSP accelerators, whereby we can load up any of the U82 powered plugins inside Live and they run right off of Apollo. And what's really nice is that we can run plugins inside Live and have plugins running inside the console application simultaneously. So, whether we're tracking, mixing, or mastering, Apollo provides the sound quality, low latency performance, and power for all phases of audio production. 